one likes doing the dishes. Ever since the first reusable plates, cups, and cutlery were invented, there's always been someone stuck with washing them after each meal. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just eat the dishes? Luckily, there are ways to do just this. Since ancient times, Africans have used injera as part of their meals. This flatbread doubles as both dishes and silverware. Various stews, salads, and cooked meats and sauce are poured from the cooking pots onto injera plates. These plates soak up all the extra broth and juices, filling them with flavor. Extra pieces of injera are also put on injera plates. These spare pieces of injera are to be used as silverware. Eaters pull off part of the bread with their right hand, then use the bread to scoop up food, sort of like a sandwich. Once the food has been eaten, the flavored injera plates are eaten as well. Meanwhile, the people of ancient India had their own flatbreads. The exact breads vary by the region, but many of them are used in a similar way. Food is placed on the table in a bowl, or a cooking pot itself is placed on the table. The flatbread is then used to scoop up the food. Sometimes food is placed directly into the bread before serving, to make something like a pocket sandwich. Naan is the most famous Indian flatbread, and one of the most widely eaten Indian flatbreads over most of the world. In both cases, forks and knives are not needed as the food is cut into pieces before cooking. Certain times serving spoons are present to add food to a flatbread, but not always. The end result is just a cooking pot that needs cleaning and little more. The idea of eating with flatbread traveled more as traders from Europe visited Africa and India. These exact ingredients and techniques used to create flatbread were new to the Europeans. They were used to crusty loaves of bread instead of thin flatbreads. Europeans began to cut thick slabs of stale bread instead of baking flat bread before their meals. These flat slabs of bread were known as trenchers. By the Middle Ages, trenchers were very common at meals for all classes of people. The wealthy had trenchers cut for them by servants. The servants then arranged the spare trenchers on nice patterns on a serving knife. The poor just cut trenchers off the loaf as they were needed. Either way, it was customary to use a new trencher between courses if a meal had more than one course. Used trenchers were typically given to the poor as alms instead of being eaten at a meal. The bread was considered too stale to be eaten normally. Forks weren't common eating utensils in the Middle Ages. If someone was wealthy enough to have a fork, it was mostly used to help slice meat before serving. Spoons were very common though, as everyone who could afford a spoon had one. Those who could not afford a spoon or couldn't make a spoon simply ate off trenchers with their hands. Bread trenchers remained popular from the Middle Ages all the way to around the 1600s. Around that time, the wealthy served to use specially ornamented dessert trenchers. These trenchers were made of delicately ornamented wood or porcelain. As many desserts of the time were things like candied fruit or cut cheese that didn't soak into trenchers, using bread as a trencher just wasn't necessary. In time, reusable trenchers started to show up in other courses as well, eventually resulting in the wealthy using porcelain or wood plates and bowls at every meal. As the poor liked to imitate the rich, eventually bread trenchers fell out of fashion almost entirely. When Europeans found their way to what they called the New World, they found that the peoples of South America were still using flatbread for eating. Tortillas wrapped around feelings were and still are very common. You might know them as things like tacos or burritos. Fried triangles of tortilla are still very popular scooping up things like salsa or guacamole. Traveling northward, they saw the natives of North America eating with spoons out of pots and bowls. Flat bread was unknown to them, and fried bread came to them only after it was introduced to them by the Europeans, by force. Anyway, back in Europe, the nobility became increasingly fancy with their meals. Multi-course meals became the norm. In order to show off, the rich would have elaborate dessert courses on specialized dessert tables. Sugar was very expensive back then, so being able to build entire gardens and palaces from gum paste, spun sugar, cookies, pastelage, and other sweets just for the dessert table was a show of great wealth. Sugar baskets filled with bonbons and reproductions of vegetables and fruits made from fruit paste were given as trendy parting gifts. Whatever wasn't edible was made of silver and gold at the dessert table. Normal tableware was so common that things had come full circle. Being able to eat your dishes was a sign of prestige. And what happened? Well, the monarchy fell. And with them went the idea of outrageous meals with outrageous edible tableware. For almost 200 years, edible tableware has just been a novelty in the United States and Europe. If you're lucky, you can find soup in a bread bowl, edible ice cream bowls, or maybe some chocolate shot glasses at the store. Meanwhile, India and Africa and South America kept on enjoying their flatbread as always. However, the idea of disposable tableware caught on. Soon plastic cutlery, plates, and cups were everywhere in common usage. Millions of tons of trash disposed from meals is finding its way into the oceans, however. Seabirds and fish are dying with stomachs full of plastic. 
In response to this terrible state, a few companies like Bakey's in India and Lollyware in the United States have begun to develop edible tableware. Spoons, bowls, plates, forks, and other modern tableware are being made from a hard bread seasoned with various spices. Think of it as an evolution of the trencher. Cups and bowls are being made from agar or gelatin so it can be waterproof and at least a little heatproof to help stand up to soups and hot drinks, as well as cold drinks and frozen things. Sometimes material similar to an ice cream cone is used to create plates and bowls as well. Unfortunately, edible modern tableware can be hard to find inexpensive. It's a fairly new development, so the means of production are still being worked on. Making edible tableware isn't cheap. The low number of companies making it drives the price up further, if you can find it at all. This results in edible tableware currently being more a luxury for the wealthy than something you can find easily at the grocery store. However, as more edible tableware is produced, better methods of production, more competition, and higher volumes will drive the prices down. Eventually, it may be common to buy to-go food in edible containers with forks and spoons you can eat. Almost nothing will go to the trash. Someday, doing the dishes very well may be obsolete. Until then, we can dream. Then get back to scrubbing.